sound. It plays a vital role in our daily lives, connecting us to our surroundings and stirring emotions or memories. Sound transports us to other places, whether it's listening to music, watching a film, or even hearing a distinct call of a bird that only arrives in the spring. Sound is majestic and an important element of your film. For filmmakers on the start of their journey, you may be familiar with seeing something like this, a boom operator recording sound with a directional microphone, typically a shotgun microphone. Shotgun microphones use a narrow pickup pattern designed to capture sound from a specific direction. With the recent rise of VR and 360 degree video, an old format has been rejuvenized, the ambisonic format, an immersive audio technology offering a more authentic and inviting listening experience than conventional directional sound recording. Today, we look to demystify the ambisonic microphone, and if filmmakers even need to pay attention to this magical format if you already have a shotgun mic. Ambisonic sound is an audio technology that captures the full 360 degree sound field Unlike directional microphones, which are designed to capture sound from a specific direction, ambisonic sound records from all directions, allowing for a more naturalistic, three-dimensional listening experience. Now, you can't just do this with your regular Rode video mic. This type of recording is achieved by using an ambisonic microphone to capture the sound, which records four or more channels of audio data. This provides a more accurate representation of the sonic environment, creating a more engaging and captivating experience for the listener. How do they do this? Well, the core of an ambisonic microphone structure consists of multiple microphone capsules arranged in a specific configuration. Most ambisonic microphones have four capsules positioned on a tetrahedral or spherical arrangement to capture sound in three dimensions. The polar pattern of these capsules are typically omnidirectional or subcardioid, meaning they capture sound all around. Although operating a shotgun microphone requires some skill, they are generally more user-friendly than an ambisonic microphone. Consider the Rode VideoMic, a popular consumer shotgun microphone. To use it, simply attach it to the top of your camera, connect it to the audio port, voila, you are done. Many shotgun microphones can also be conveniently used with boom arms, allowing for greater flexibility and precision in capturing audio from various angles and distances. Ambisonic microphones, on the other hand, are a little different. First, you'll need an ambisonic microphone. They have recently brought ambisonic mics onto the market, such as Zoom, Rode, and Sennheiser, each offering various features with materials and different price points. When using a sophisticated system like the Sennheiser Ambio VR, it also requires a special field recorder to manage each channel digitally and seamlessly. The Ambio VR microphone features four capsules, generating four channels of audio that create the spatial sound field. These four channels necessitate four separate audio signal inputs, requiring a field mixer with four XLR inputs. Therefore, you're not going to be able to record ambisonic audio on something like a Tascam DR100. Now this setup introduces more cables to your workflow than a conventional microphone and furthermore, due to the increased number of inputs, carrying the mixer in a bag is a little bit inconvenient. As a result, you may need to bring an extra stand for the mixer or at the very least, have a microphone stand attachment to securely and visibly mount the mixing device. Next, you must mount the ambisonic microphone while keeping in mind the orientation of the capsules, which is crucial for proper ambisonic recording. However, the challenges doesn't necessarily end there. After completing your recordings, you will find that they are saved as an A format audio file, which then requires conversion to B format files. From this, it becomes clear that ambisonic sound recording is not merely an alternative audio workflow for solo filmmakers. Instead, it represents a distinct and complex domain, typically requiring a dedicated sound recordist to manage effectively. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the more formal aspect of this video. I want to say a Fadivo fireside chat, but there is no fire, just my PC, so we won't roll with that name just yet. So, I think I would like to say, or openly admit, that um, I tend to buy too much equipment. Um, I am very passionate about camera technology and filmmaking technology, and there is also the sentiment that the next big camera is going to do even more things, and as a result, produce better quality video footage. And there was the sentiment that an ambisonic microphone was gonna be 
a good investment. And I went into this video to compare directly a shotgun microphone to an ambisonic microphone. But it's not so much as, as similar as comparing a 35 millimeter prime to an 85 millimeter prime. They're quite comparable. I would say an ambisonic microphone versus a shotgun microphone is more like a mirrorless camera versus a phantom camera. While yes, they both shoot footage, they do so in such different ways that you can't really compare them uh, to purchase one or the other. It's that you either purchase a mirrorless camera or you purchase a phantom uh, camera because you have specific needs. That's the same with an ambisonic microphone because I want to ask you guys a question. When throughout this video have you heard ambisonic audio? Well, you haven't and there's a very good reason as to why. So I want to bring you over to this website on uh, Rhodes documentation for their ambisonic microphone and they've got a few um, areas of where you would use it. They've got surround sound applications. Then we go down, we've got virtual reality and 360 degree video applications. Because one of the core things to know about ambisonic audio is it only really excels through ex specific listening locations. And what I mean by that is this requires having a sweet spot where the listener's location is placed correspondence to the intended listening location. And if they're moved away from this, the accuracy of spatial sound will decrease, resulting in inconsistencies and distortion. And this is why it only really works in applications such as virtual reality, not a YouTube video where you as the listener can inherently be in a 360 degree environment. So it's not so much, I had the, the concept of with ambisonic, uh, an ambisonic microphone with the four audio channels and the four capsules, perhaps if I'm doing a dialogue scene with a lot of people, I can capture all with one tool, opposed to having three different shotgun microphones or three different lavaliers. But that's not really the case. It's about bringing the viewer into the world, opposed to capturing several different streams of audio at once. However, that is not to say that ambisonic microphones cannot do that. Of course, you are getting the four raw audio channels. And as a result, if you're out doing field recording, which is uh, when um, with the ambisonic microphone, I do find I get a lot more uh, benefits and of use when I'm out taking sound effects recordings because I can be out in the wilderness recording the sound of a forest, come home, and then when in post-production listening back to the audio, I hear that there's a better bird call over to the right. Of course, if I was out doing some sound effects with my shotgun microphone, I would not be able to pan over to the right to pick up that bird better. With an ambisonic microphone, I could, so it's great for stuff like that. But for film production, you know, that's, this is where the shotgun microphone excels. Video production, broadcast events, where you need to isolate the uh, audio source and negate what is around it to the best of the mic's degree is, is really, where you want to be using a shotgun microphone. An ambisonic microphone is a totally different tool. All right, so I hope this has been informational. That video was a blast to make. Um, I've been Lewis with Fidebo. Remember to comment, like, and give us a subscribe. It really helps the channel grow. And uh, I will catch you guys next week or the week after uh, with a brand new video.